Hello guys, welcome again to another episode. This is from 3 Chemistry and we are going to look at the mold concept. And uh, before we look at the mold concept, we defined uh, a subject uh, called chemistry in form 1 and we say chemistry is a subject that deals with the study of number one, composition, structure and the properties of matter. And we said in terms of composition, matter is made up of particles. So therefore, in chemistry, we deal with elementary particles such as electrons, atoms, ions, molecules, etc. It is not possible for one to know the number of particles present in any given amount of substance. Just like in a life, we use various units when we are counting a quite a, when we are counting a number of items. For example, if we talk about a dozen, a dozen is known to contain 12 items. That means the 12 items, we don't look at the size, we don't look at the shape so long as it is 12. We assume one dozen of any items will always contain 12 items. The same as a punch. A punch will always have five items, regardless, regardless of the size, regardless of the shape. So those are the common units that we use in life when we are counting a number of items. For example, this duster here is matter. Matter is made up of particles, and we say matter is anything that has mass and it is able to occupy space. So it is not possible for us to know the number of particles present in this particular substance here. Just like this book here, or this calculator. Since it is one, we do not know the number of particles present in this. We do not know the number of particles present in this particular exercise book. So the assumption is, so long as we are going to talk about one mole of any substance, it is going to contain the same number of particles, just like a dozen has 12 items. And we say that uh, the mole is the amount of any substance that will always contain 6.023 times 10 power 23 particles. And the particles could be electrons, they could be atoms, they could be ions, molecules, etc. In that case, we are going to use the basic unit in, uh, of counting in chemistry known as the mole to try and determine the number of particles present in any given substance. So just like a dozen contains 12 items, a mole contains 6.023 times 10 power 23 grams. And we say the mass in grams of one mole the mass in grams of one mole, the mass in grams of one mole of a substance, of a substance, of a substance, is referred to as, is referred to as a smaller mass also for elements, we just call it relative atomic mass. We just call it relative atomic mass. We just call it relative atomic mass. So I want us to look at the relationship between the mass, uh, or let us look at what we call relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass. So what is relative atomic mass? Relative atomic mass can be defined as is the mass is the mass of any atom any atom compared any atom compared to that compared to that of a single hydrogen atom compared to that of a single hydrogen atom compared to that of a single hydrogen atom. So we are taking hydrogen as our reference element. That is to say, the masses of individual atoms are very, very small and therefore cannot be determined under normal laboratory conditions. And therefore, 
hydrogen has been chosen as a reference element and the assumption is or we say the mass of a single hydrogen atom is actually one unit mass one unit mass so we are going to derive the relative the relative atomic masses of all other elements based on what or in reference to hydrogen atom so let us uh, let us try to understand how to go about this question here and we say relative atomic mass it is the mass of any element we say is the mass of any element any element compared compared to that of compared to that of a single compared to that of a single hydrogen hydrogen atom but how do we find the relative atomic mass of an element so we are going to derive the relative atomic masses of elements from the atomic numbers from the periodic table and we are going to say for example if the atomic number of an element is an even number to get the relative atomic mass in simple terms just multiply by two for example calcium is in atomic number 20 to get the mass in grams of calcium you take 20 times 2 you are going to get 40. if it's an odd number let me say if you're talking about aluminium aluminium is in atomic number 13 so to get the relative atomic mass of, of aluminium you are going to take 13 you more by 2 then you add 1 and that one is going to give you 27 27 so in short this information will always be given but if you are not given just derive them from the atomic numbers in case of an even atomic number simply multiply by two to get the relative atomic mass of that element and in case of an odd number multiply by two then you add one to get the relative atomic mass of that particular element so let us try to understand the relationship the relationship between the mole and the number of particles where we define the mole as the amount of any substance that contains 6.023 times 10 power 23 particles and this number here this number 6.023 times 10 power 23 particles we call it the Avogadro's number or the Avogadro's constant which is noted by letter L we call it Avogadro's constant we call it Avogadro's constant we call it the Avogadro's constant so let us try to know the relationship between the mole and the number of particles relationship between relationship between the mole relationship between the mole and the number and the number of particles and the number of particles relationship between the mole and the number of particles we are going to do an example here we are going to do an example on this example reads how many atoms how many how many atoms how many atoms are there in are there in 20 grams of calcium are there in 20 grams of calcium so into brackets calcium is 40 that means the relative atomic mass of calcium is 40 and one mole of calcium means it weighs exactly 40 grams and from there you are given Avogadro's number which is 6.023 times 10 power 23 particles remember particles could be ions they could be electrons they could be molecules and so forth and so on now we know that whatever that is given in brackets represents one mole and one mole of calcium weighs exactly 40 grams 
And since this is one mole, we said one mole of any substance will always contain 6.023 times 10 power 23 particles. In this case, the particles we have in the question are atoms. So if one mole is 40 grams, and the 40 grams contains this number of particles, what about 20 grams of the same element? So we ask ourselves, 20 grams would be equal to how many? 20 grams would be equal to how many what? How many atoms? So if we cross multiply, we are going to have 20. We multiply by 6.023 times 10 power 23, divide by, we divide by 40. So 20 goes to 40, two times, then two, you take it to 6.023. It is going to give us 3.0115 times 10 power 23 atoms times 10 power 23 atoms so you see you can be able to relate the mass of an element with the number of particles it contains so let us try to do example number two let us do example number two to try and understand how to go about it Example number two, I want us to look at uh, to look at the following example number two. What if you get a question that says calculate the mass, calculate the mass in the following atoms in the following atoms. So calculate the mass, that is what we are supposed to calculate in the following atoms, bearing in mind that atoms are examples of particles. That is A, we have 3.015, 3.0115 times 10 power 23 atoms, atoms of aluminium, of aluminium. So we have the relative atomic mass of aluminium is 27 there. So we know that one mole of aluminium weighs exactly 27 grams. And the 27 grams will always contain how many particles? We know it is 6.023 times 10 power 23 particles. And in this case, we need atoms. So if one mole is equal to 27 grams and one mole of any substance contains 6.023 times 10 power 23 atoms, what about 3.0115 times 10 power 23 atoms? What is it going to be equal to? If you cross multiply, you are going to get 27 times 3.0115 times 10 power 23, everything divided by 20 everything divided by 6.023 times 10 power 23. If you cancel this one and this one, then this one goes here two times, then two goes to 27. This one is going to give us 13.5 grams. That one is going to give us 25 grams, and that is the mass of aluminum that will contain exactly 3.0115 times 10 power 23 atoms. B, B, what if we do this one, which is similar to what we have done, we have B, which is 12.046 times 10 power 23 atoms, but the atoms of which element? The atoms of iron. So you'll always be given one mole, or the relative atomic mass of iron is 56. Then of course, the Avogadro's number has not been given, but you should always know that it is 6.023 times 10 power 23 particles. So we ask ourselves, one mole of iron will weigh exactly 56 grams. Since this is one mole, one mole of any substance will always contain 6.023 times 10 power 23 what we need are atoms 
So, what about this number of particles? The particles will, will be on this side, so we'll have 12.046 times 10 power 23. So what would they, or what mass would they have? So if we cross multiply, we are going to have 12.046 times 10 power 23. We multiply by 56, that is this times this, everything divided by 6.023 times 10 power 23. Then this one will go here two times. Then you take 2 times 56, 2 times 56, you are going to get 1. That is 112 grams. And that is actually the answer to that. That is the answer to that. That is the answer to that. Now, I want us to look at the relationship between the mole, the relationship between the mole, or how we can convert moles into mass, and so forth and so on. So, relationship between or conversion, let me call it conversion, conversion of mass to moles or even moles to mass anyway. So for us to be able to understand it better, I want us to use this triangle here. I want us to use the triangle here. I want us to use this triangle here. This is our mass. So to assist us understand how we convert mass to moles, we are going to use this triangle where we have the mass, we have molar mass, and here we have the number of moles. We have the number of moles. So the vertical line means division. The, 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 okay, the horizontal line means division. The vertical line means multiplication. That is to say, if you want to find the mass, if you want to find the mass of any substance there, you are going to take the molar mass, the molar mass, you multiply by the number of moles. So from this information here, you can be able to calculate the number of moles, you can be able to get the molar mass from this single uh, formula by making any of this the subject. But to go very fast, if you need what we call the molar mass, you need the molar mass, you are going to take the mass, you divide by what? The number of moles. Then, if you need the number of moles, if you need the number of moles, you are going to take, you need moles, you take mass, you divide by the molar mass. You take the mass, you divide by the molar mass, so the molar mass of an element is the same as the relative atomic mass anyway. So I want us to do some two, three examples to see how we can use that triangle or this formula to simply calculate either the mass, the moles, and even the molar mass. So let us have some few examples here. Let us have some few examples. So example one, Example one, we have uh, how many moles are there in three grams of carbon? How many moles are there in three grams of carbon? Three grams of carbon. So what we do not have here it is the mass of one mole of carbon, which will always be equal to its relative atomic mass. And to get the relative atomic mass of carbon, carbon is in atomic number six, and therefore six is an even number. Just bullet double it to give you 12. So we know one mole of carbon weighs exactly 12 grams. So three grams will be equal to how many? Three grams will be equal to how many moles? That is, we cross multiply, we have three times one mole, 
that is 3 grams times 1 mole you divide by 12 grams so grams and grams will go so 3 goes to itself once it goes to 12 four times that means we are going to be having a quarter which translates to 0 0.25 watt moles alternatively alternatively we can calculate moles by using that formula so to get moles we say we take the mass you divide by the molar mass you divide by the molar mass and the mass that we have been given is actually three grams you divide by the molar mass meaning one mole of carbon weighs exactly 12 grams and this one will be equal to 3 divided by 12 would give us 0 0.25 moles anyway so it is very very easy for us to be able to calculate moles given the mass and of course the relative atomic mass of an element is usually provided in the brackets but in case it's not given you should be able to remember how to find it from the atomic numbers of the elements in the periodic table so let us look at example number two example number two calculate the mass of example two calculate calculate the mass calculate the mass of calculate the mass of 0 0.2 moles calculate the mass calculate what calculate the mass of calculate the mass of uh, of 0 0.25 of 0 0.25 moles of beryllium and you are given beryllium has a relative atomic mass of 9 so how do you go about that? So whatever you are given in bracket represents the mass of one mole. And we know one mole of beryllium would weigh exactly 9 grams. What about 0 0.25 moles? So if you ask yourself that question, you are going to cross multiply so that we have 0 0.25 times 9 divided by 1 and that gives us that gives us that is 0.25 we multiply by 9 and this one gives me 2.25 grams anyway so what we are calculating is the mass but how do we calculate mass alternatively using the formula we said mass will always be equal to number of moles number of moles you multiply by what you multiply by the molar mass which is the same as the relative atomic mass for elements molar mass and uh, the number of moles we have from the question are 0 0.25 we multiply by the relative atomic mass of beryllium which is 9 and the answer here is going to be exactly 2.25 grams and that is how we do that calculation anyway so for us to be able to understand this topic we should always know that the mole of any substance or one mole of any substance will always contain 6.023 times 10 power 23 particles and one mole of any substance is equal to its relative atomic mass that is uh, what we can uh, do for today but uh, in case you have questions and of course we are going to do more of the questions from the mole concepts so that you learn on how to apply the same in the calculation of any question that you may get along uh, the way for those who have not subscribed kindly subscribe so that anytime we do a video like this you will be able to be notified and benefit from from it